with so many guns to play with and all their attachments to unlock, what are the ones that you should be committing to if you're a Warzone beginner for your loadout? Well, let's take a look. Hey guys, it's Forza Dave here. Welcome back to another video. Today, we are doing a much requested update to the Warzone beginner loadout for season five. So if you've been around here a little bit, then you might have seen my previous Warzone beginner loadout video. Um, whilst that video has done really well in terms of views on the channel, the thing I'm actually really happy with is the amount of constructive criticism that I got in the comments. Uh, there were a lot of comments of people just saying, this loadout's awesome, this loadout's really helped me out. Thank you very much for the video, which is nice to see. Uh, but what I really liked is a lot of people actually criticizing and saying, hey, this video is good, but um, it, it could be better in certain ways. The main criticism that I got was that I was basically saying, hey, use this M4 and this Cold War MP5 with all of these attachments. And whilst they were really good guns for beginners, I kind of overlooked the fact that obviously when you start Warzone, you don't have any of the attachments. So what should you be using as you level up? Well, in this video, uh, the way I've structured it should cover that a little better. But before we jump into the video, if you do enjoy it, then make sure you smash the like button down below and leave a comment just telling me once again more constructive criticism about the videos or just a little bit of appreciation for the video itself. Uh, I care way more about that than anything else. Actually seeing some interaction down below that I can get involved with, get some conversation going, that works out well for me. So let's jump into this then. What are the guns that we're going to be covering today? Previously, I recommended that you run an M4 from Modern Warfare and a Cold War MP5. I decided that we should go down the route of a long range AR that can kind of beam at range and is fairly simple to use, low recoil, uh, one size fits all in that approach. And then for our secondary, having that kind of standard quick SMG to give new players a chance to run around pretty quick, get up in people's faces and win those close range gunfights as well. I'm going to stick to that for this video. I'm not going to be bringing in things like sniper and sniper support. I think that's a bit more high level uh, and new players, whilst I think they should try out a lot of different play styles, I think that the AR SMG combo is just, it's far more flexible uh, and Right now, there are some real insane beaming guns that uh, can compete with the snipers at range anyway. So, yeah, I think that's the best way to go. Now, as I mentioned, in my previous Warzone beginner loadout video, I did not cover kind of what you should be using at lower levels on the guns. I was just saying, use these five attachments. And then people said, well, I don't have any of those. So what should I be doing? For this video, I've restructured it, so instead of giving you one loadout, I'm actually going to give you the loadouts in stages for the guns. So we've got three loadouts here, Beginner 1, Beginner 2, and Beginner 3. And what these are going to be going down is basically saying, at this level, use these attachments on the gun, at this level, use these attachments, and then when you get the gun towards max build, this is what you should use. And what this will give you is a kind of step-by-step -step process as you unlock attachments, you know what ones to put on to have your gun working the best, meaning that you can then work towards that final build. And this will hopefully be a lot more uh, informative to new players so that they know when I'm level 15 on the Krig, what should I use? I hope that makes sense. Before we jump into the guns, I'm actually just going to cover the perks and the lethal and tactical because they're the same on all three classes. So uh, perks, we're going for EOD, Overkill and Amped. Uh, EOD is going to be the most simple kind of passive perk that you can use it just means that explosives are less likely to kill you the damage from explosives gets dropped heavily as a new player when you maybe position a bit worse and you're and you're kind of not playing as aggressive straight up you really don't need something like double time and having eod to block things like semtexes rpgs strellers or whatever kind of explosives people are throwing at you just gives you way more chance to fight back in fights um, i've been using eod a lot more even though i like playing aggressive because i there's nothing worse than kind of pushing towards a building and someone lobs a semtex on a wall somewhat near you and then you just blow up not fun so eod really important for new players especially overkill it kind of goes without saying we've got two primary guns one in our primary slot and one in the secondary slot without overkill we wouldn't be able to run the smg so you want to take overkill on your first class then when you get to your second loadout which is usually uh, the one that comes out of the sky for free uh, that's when you can pick up ghost pick up your two guns off the floor and then you end up with your two primary weapons and ghost to stay off of the UAVs. But overkill is necessary on this class, so we're shoving that in perk two. Perk three, 
amped. This just allows you to swap between that primary and that secondary as fast as you need to. If you're beaming someone at long range with your Krig, but then one of the team manages to push up on you, the most important thing is that you can switch to your MP5 as quickly as possible, get that out, start hip firing, and just blaze the guy off the map. Okay, so EOD overkill amped for your perks. Lethal is going to be Semtex. Semtex is a very, very simple to use explosive because of the nature of it being sticky. It means you can just chuck it in a building. You don't need to worry kind of like a normal grenade where it could bounce off and go somewhere you don't want it to. You can stick it to vehicles. You can stick it to players themselves. You can stick it to walls near players. It just is the most simple to use and effective lethal. For tactical, heartbeat sensor. Heartbeat sensor is universally useful. Uh, yes, a lot of people do end up getting ghost, but a heartbeat sensor is always going to be useful. You don't need to aim it as such. You just, every time you push towards a building as a new player, you just get your heartbeat sensor out, you check, and you can say, okay, either there's, I know there are people in the building because they're showing up on it, or if no one's showing up on the heartbeat sensor, you know that either people have ghosts, so you need to be a little bit kind of careful and look for signs of people being in the building, or you can just say, nope, no one's in here. We're all good. Now let's take a look at the guns. This is what you're all here for. I've decided to put my Excel skills to the test and compile this list that you can see here. I've got one for the Krig and I've got one for the MP5. And what this shows is just simply a list of the attachments in each of the kind of slots. So for the Krig, we've got the optic, the muzzle, the barrel, the body, the underbarrel, the magazine, the handle and the stock. We've got all of the different attachments you can unlock and the levels at which you unlock those attachments. Then what I've done is I've decided for the Krig, I've broken up into three stages, basically level 15 on the Krig, level 30, and then full build, which for the Krig is level 48. And then for the MP5, I've just done two stages and I'll explain why in a little bit. But first of all, let's take a look at the Krig. So at level 15, you've been using your Krig for a little bit uh, and you've got it to level 15. That will not take long at all. The five attachments that you want to be using are the Vision Tech two times, the Flash Guard, the Foregrip, the 45 round mag, and the Tactical Stock. So let's do a quick rundown of what this build entails. Here's the level 15 Krig in the game. Starting off with the Flash Guard, this is a very simple muzzle attachment that takes away some of that uh, vertical bounce, you know, giving you vertical recoil. It gives you a bit of aiming stability and, very important for such an early attachment, it gives you some position concealment. Um, so it actually keeps you, I believe, off the map a little bit. It doesn't keep you off the map as much as the suppressor or the agency suppressor. Um, but I'm almost certain it does reduce the amount of time that your ping appears on the map, uh, which is a very useful thing to have. You know, everyone in Warzone is running around with suppressors to keep themselves off the map. So flash guard, majorly important. The foregrip is going to be a, just a nice way to get rid of some of the horizontal bounce that you can't control as easily on the, on the Krig. Uh, horizontal recoil is impossible to control because it's random left and right, whereas vertical recoil, whilst you do want to keep it as low as possible you can control it just by either pulling your stick down or pulling your mouse down but the foregrip gets rid of that horizontal bounce quite nicely ammunition is very important on basically every gun in warzone because you're running into multiple squads and the standard ammunition size on basically all the guns apart from the smgs sorry the lmgs uh is just too low so shoving a 45 round mag just to extend that ammunition a little bit uh all it does is in terms of cons is reduce how quickly you can reload but that's very much worth it because it's an AR. You're not being forced to reload kind of very quickly in awkward situations. 45 round mag, a no brainer. Optic, because we're running this as a long range gun, the vision tech is the best of the bunch at this level. Uh, it won't get you zoomed in as much as the, the preferred three times and four times, of course, but it will allow you to at least contest at ranges uh, much better than the other kind of red dots. So once again, a no brainer. The final attachment doesn't really matter too much, I believe, at level 15, but the tactical stock giving you aim walking movement speed. So when you're scoped in, you're allowed to strafe a little bit more. It might not be something you do much as a new player. You might just scope in and stay still. But I think that kind of passively being able to walk a little bit faster while ADS is uh, it's going to be useful whether you actively try it or not. So the tactical stock quite it fits nicely. So next, you continue leveling up your Krig and you get it to level 30. At level 30, you unlock a bunch of new attachments that uh, are going to be very, very useful towards pushing you towards that full build. So you're going to keep three of the attachments that you were using at level 15, and they are the Flash Guard, the Foregrip, 
as you can see here they've got two colors the uh, gray and the orange and the 45 round the two things you're going to change you're going to remove the tactical stock and you're going to put on the ranger barrel and then you're going to remove the vision tech two times and replace it with the all important axial arms 3x here is that updated build for level 30 the barrel being the ranger is actually something which people will use in their final build for the Krieg. I'm going to talk about another barrel in this list that a lot of people are using. I'm going to compare them, and you can use either of them in your final build. One of them is this Ranger barrel that you'll have by the time you get to level 30. It gives you increased bullet velocity and improved vertical recoil control with very few cons. It removes some hip fire accuracy, which really does not matter. We're building an MP5 for hip fire accuracy when people are close. We do not need this gun to be hip fire accurate. Uh, and it removes some of the aim walking movement speed, which I know I just said was quite useful. But it's worth it. You don't lose that much of it for, uh, I think it's a plus 50% bullet velocity, which makes this gun snap. Like you're, you're shooting bullets and they're landing pretty much straight away. So you don't need to lead your shots too much, which for new players is insanely important. Just being able to aim and shoot. Uh, and I think it's a vertical recoil control of around 30%, I believe. Um, so it it really pulls back that vertical recoil. So you don't have to control it as much at all. Makes the gun absolutely beam. Also, as I said, we've taken off the stock uh, and we've got our three times axial arms scope. This is pretty much the most used scope on long range guns in Warzone on the Cold War side of things right now. Uh, it is just perfect magnification for long range. That's all I really need to say about this. You shove on the axial arms and you stick with it. Now let's take a quick look at the full build. So at full build, you're going to keep your Axial Arms three times on your gun uh, because as I said, that is just the scope to run. Your muzzle is going to change to the all important agency suppressor. It, the agency suppressor, the monolithic suppressor, whatever that final suppressor is on basically every gun in Warzone is the most important attachment. Keeping you off the map and I will talk about it when we jump back into the loadout screen. The barrel, as I mentioned, we could keep the Ranger barrel. That's why I've kept a green market because it is such an important barrel in the game. But a lot of people also use the mil spec barrel. It's the final one in the list. And I'll show you the, the comparison and you as a new player, I would say try both of them out and then you can make your decision because there are there's literally like a 50-50% split of people trying both of these. You're going to remove the foregrip finally because we have now got the field agent grip, which basically does what the foregrip does, but better. And I'll show you that in the game as well. And then we're going to put on the Stanag 50 round mag to bolster our... Um, our mag size so we can kill more people with one mag a quick mistake in my excel spreadsheet it's actually the stanag 60 round mag uh, so you're getting 15 more bullets not just five that probably didn't sound that good just getting five more but having another 15 bullets is majorly important now what it does do is it does reduce your ads time a little bit um which doesn't matter too much and this is where the debate in the barrel comes so when we look at the barrel i recommended that you should try out the cmv mil spec barrel the key things that the mil spec and the ranger have in common is that they both increase increase your bullet velocity and they give you the exact same vertical recoil i've checked this online now what the mil spec does it gives you improved horizontal recoil which is useful but the krig doesn't have a crazy amount of horizontal bounce to start off with so it's definitely doable with the ranger so you might say as a new player i want as little re recoil as possible if that's the most important thing to you as a new player then try out the mil spec. It also increases the effective damage range, but it's not to a point where you'll really feel the difference that much, at least in my opinion. So that's the first thing in terms of the pros that the mil spec gives you. The main cons it gives you is that it decreases your sprinting move speed, which I guess doesn't matter too much because we're using a, an SMG to run around uh, most of the time, but it does reduce your ADS speed pretty heavily. And I find that for new players, the biggest issue they'll have is that when they're using this long range gun they won't kind of they won't set up their fights they'll be running around something will appear in front of them at some distance and they'll want to start shooting at it and the nerf to the ads speed you do feel especially when we've just moved to this stanag mag which also reduces ads speed so really the mil spec is more accurate but far less snappy so it comes down to what's more important for you do you want 
more recoil control. If so, use the mil spec. It improves your, your recoil control horizontally as well as vertically. If you don't mind about the horizontal bounce, you're getting the same vertical recoil control from the Ranger, but you're not losing out on that speed as much. Try both of these out, see what one works best for you, um, but until you get to level 48 where you get the mil spec, just use the Ranger. The other two attachments that we have changed are the grip. So the field agent grip, you can see it improves the horizontal recoil and the vertical recoil control. Because we're getting horizontal recoil control from this, sometimes I don't feel like you need the mil spec. As we move around these attachments, you know we're gaining something here. We potentially don't need something somewhere else in our attachments. But the field agent grip is this one size fits all attachment for every Cold War gun in the game, giving you improved recoil control across the board remove some firing movement speed and some ADS firing movement speed but really we're making this gun beam as much as possible so the field agent grip is a no-brainer and then finally the agency suppressor which once again improves that vertical recoil control it gives you complete sound suppression which is invaluable in warzone you do not appear on the radar when you shoot which is it, it's it's beyond meta at this point you just need it uh, as well as bullet velocity and effective damage range which are the two main things that we need for a long range gun we lose out on some ads speed that once again if you have that mil spec as well as the stanag mag this gun scopes in slow make your decision uh, as well as some aim walking steadiness and some aiming stability doesn't matter too much we've turned this gun into an absolute beamer and there we go. That's the final Krig you will be using when you hit that max level, or I believe it's level 48 if you're going to use the mil spec. If not, I think it's level 46. So next, let's fly through the MP5 from Modern Warfare. The great thing about the MP5 from Modern Warfare is two things in terms of leveling it. Number one, it's a Modern Warfare gun, and the Modern Warfare guns just level quicker because for some reason, Modern Warfare made the XP that is between every level a lot less than... Cold War has. Cold War has really, really long leveling times. Modern Warfare guns you can level very, very quick in Plunder. Uh, also, what's very lucky is that, in my opinion, the best build for the MP5, the Modern Warfare one, is achievable in 37 levels. Even though there's like 50-something levels on the gun, I think when you hit level 37, you've got the full build. So, I've only broke it down into two stages for this, because you can level up quicker than with the Krig, and you don't need to get to as high a level. So, level 20, we're starting off with the Monolithic Suppressor Muzzle, the FSS Light Barrel, the 1 milliwatt laser, the rubberized grip, and the 45 round mag. So, we've got that build right here in front of us now. The Monolithic Suppressor, in all circumstances, apart from the MP5, and I'll show you why in just a second, is I kind of, as I said, it's the one-size-fits-all attachment in terms of suppressors. It's like that agency suppressor we just had on. It gives you sound suppression and damage range for only a bit of loss in ADS speed, and it's not much at all. Uh, also, we are kitting this gun for hip fire mostly. Yes, you can still ADS with this thing. I'm not saying don't, but this gun has such good hip fire that when people get anywhere close to you, you can just start hip firing and you'll be landing most of your bullets and you don't have that added delay of trying to scope in. Uh, but the mono suppressor is going to suit you very well at level 20. The barrel is the FSS light, which brings back some of the ADS speed if you need it. Um, you lose a little bit of bullet velocity, not too important on your SMGs because you're firing at shorter ranges anyway. Um, but I put this on just as a kind of a fallback in case you were having some problems uh, and you needed to ADS at some kind of mid range. The one milliwatt laser improves the hipfire accuracy, which is what this build is intended for. So it just made sense to put on at level 20. The 45 round mag is the only attachment of these five that we will be keeping on the whole time. It's the only way to improve the mag size on this gun and be able to fight multiple players, really. Uh, so it is 100% a no brainer. And then the final attachment, I went for the rubberized grip tape for a bit of recoil control. This will just give you overall a gun which has you know, solid hip fire from the, the couple of attachments we've put on for that. Uh, but also having the bit of recoil control means if you are ADSing at these earlier levels and you're trying to level up this gun as quick as possible, uh, it becomes a little bit easier to control. Uh, there wasn't a crazy amount of other attachments I really thought were of interest at level 20. So the rubberized grip tape, whilst not making a, too much sense, um, it's not going to affect you in a bad way in any way. It's just going to give you some, some buffs that you might not get to use as much if that makes sense but yeah it's a good attachment so i put it on at level 20 
And finally, when you get to level 37, you'll have all the attachments you need for an insanely strong Modern Warfare MP5. Those will be the Monolithic Integral Suppressor, which is actually a barrel. Um, so this is one of the guns in the game which has these suppressors available as barrels. And when you put them on, you'll see in the game, uh, it removes the muzzle attachment completely. You can't have the, this barrel and any muzzle. Uh, and it is stronger than the Monolithic Suppressor. It's the only time where I've seen a, a better alternative to it. So I'll show you that in game in just a second. The 5 milliwatt laser, which basically does what the 1 milliwatt laser does, but better. Uh, we're sticking with that 45 round mag. We've put a foregrip on the gun, the Merc foregrip, which is going to be really good for hip fire. I'll show you that in game as well. And sleight of hand as a perk, which is so necessary for how aggressive you can get with this gun. So here's that build within the gunsmith. The monolithic integral suppressor gives basically the same buffs as the as the mono actual suppressor, which I can't go and look at now. Um, sound suppression, bullet velocity, ADS speed. Um, but it's just well known that all of the pros that this guns gives, especially that bullet velocity and the and the loss of ADS speed, it just it's it's just better. It's it just is it's a better attachment than the the mono suppressor. Yes, this increases damage range. But damage range isn't as important on these SMGs. The, the, the damage range is basically a bonus in terms of a percentage because the damage range is already so low on these guns. You're adding a percentage to a small number. Doesn't affect it that much. Whereas bullet velocity, yes, you're not firing at things too far away, but uh, it makes the gun snap. And uh, it's a really strong attachment. Everyone uses it. Follow along. Laser, 5 milliwatt laser. This improves your hipfire accuracy. I believe it actually gives better hipfire accuracy than the 1 milliwatt laser. It also improves your sprint to fire speed, which is the, the speed at which you go from sprinting to being able to shoot. Because we're kitting this gun for hipfire and not for ADS, this is so important because usually what happens is you're sprinting. And then not only do you have to have quick sprint to fire speed, but you need quick ADS because you're not going to start shooting until you've ADSed. Because in this, we're, we're sprinting, and then we're going straight to just firing from the hip, sprint to fire speed is basically the only gate between sprinting and firing. So improving that is invaluable for this hip fire build. The Merc foregrip improves our hip fire accuracy once again. It reduces our ADS speed and our aim walking speed but once again, we're not building this gun framing in that much. We're going to be hip firing. Recoil control isn't isn't insanely important, but hip fire accuracy, especially the amount of hip fire accuracy the Merc foregrip gives, you start seeing that crosshair shrink insanely, and you can start, you know, hip firing at people who are five to ten meters away and hitting most of your shots, which is pretty gross. Forty-five round mag we're sticking with, as I explained, because it's the only way to get improved mag size. And then finally, the perk is going to be sleight of hand. Sleight of hand just improves recoil. Sorry, not recoil. Reload quickness. It's the only way you can do this um, on these modern warfare guns. Cold War guns don't have this perk section, but sleight of hand brings down the reload speed of this gun sorry brings up the reload speed brings down the reload time insane amounts it means that you can play really aggressive you can fly through these 45 rounds and then you can reload them just as quick it is such a good way of improving the ads speed sorry the the reload speed it's it's a no-brainer an absolute no-brainer put it on and there we go guys a beginner loadout progression for Warzone beginners at the moment in Season 5. The Krig and the MP5 are really going to serve you well if you build them as I've shown you here today. Um, and it means that when you're at the lower levels, you know what attachments to use. So hopefully this video becomes a lot more useful than my previous one. And uh, as I said at the beginning, if it has been useful, please do smash that like button below. It does help me out and it really shows your appreciation for the video. Anyway, guys, I will catch you guys in my next video. Bye-bye.